Police officers of Reddit, who's the smartest criminal you've ever encountered, I worked with this one guy who had a lengthy record. He had a system for getting released if he got caught. After committing a crime, if the police were in pursuit and he knew he was about to be cornered, he would act insane. His girl would play along with it telling the police that he was off his medication. The police would arrest him but then send him to a mental ward with papers instructing the ward to release to police once he was cleared. Once he was in the mental ward, he would cause a distraction that would make the person attending the desk with the file cabinet to leave said cabinet. He would then crawl to the file cabinet, look for his release to police papers, and then would literally eat the papers. When the psych evaluators decided that he was stable enough to be released, there would be no instructions to send him to the police, and he would be released to the general public. He did this about 10 times until police officers noticed him back on the streets. This stunt forced the state to change their procedure for detaining mentally unstable suspects. This was in the late 90s, a guy in my dorm came to school solely to deal drugs. He took out student loans, registered for a bunch of 300-person freshman survey courses where he would never be missed, then literally never went to class. All he did was go to raves and concerts and keggers and sell party drugs. After the first semester, he was suspended. He wrote the usual, I was young and dumb and in over my head, sob story, and got put on probation for a semester. So he had a repeat of the fall. At the end of the year, he was kicked out and didn't care. He made something on the order of $150,000. In return for about $8,000 in student loans to cover a year of housing and tuition. So far as I know, he was never caught. It may have been a short-sighted maneuver in the long run. But in the short run it seemed fairly genius to effectively use federal loans to start your drug business. Well, there was this one guy, we will call him Jack. Now, Jack stole stuff but also involved a lot of people. One time, he was planning to steal a whole bunch of cars, all luxury cars. So what he did was he got his people to call 911, etc., from all different places and countries to tell them that car theft was taking place in multiple places. He also only used a few people each time. So it was different voices, people, locations, etc., so the police went each time until he actually did the crime. Then no one came. He was never caught. When the owner of those cars came, the police didn't believe him. A homeowner walks out one morning to drive to work only to find his car missing. He reports the car stolen to police. A few days later, his car is sitting back in front of his house. When he gets inside, he finds a note. It was an apology that said the thief was in dire need of quick transportation and so he borrowed the first car he found with the keys inside. The writer noticed the sticker on the car for the local sports team, and just so there were no hard feelings, he left four tickets to an upcoming game in the glove box for the homeowner and his family. So the homeowner and his family attend the game, but when they return home they find the house has been ransacked and all items of value are gone. Some fella broke into a jewelry store a couple of decades ago. You'd think he'd go for the vault but instead he stole the chandelier overlooking the showroom. Turns out the thing is priceless. Funny thing is we found the owner's daughter half naked in the store in the morning. She claimed she had night walks and we immediately suspected foul play. Unfortunately, the security camera footage for that night had been removed so we couldn't verify her story. We let her go and tracked her as we thought she could lead us to the chandelier. Sometime later she made a trip to Mexico in the middle of nowhere. We thought she stashed the chandelier there, so we set up a raid with the Mexican police. On the day of her arrival, we raided her cottage only to find her sitting around in lingerie, with no chandelier in sight. Trail went cold and we never caught the thief, but the chandelier's been reportedly sighted in the German black market. The perfect crime, whether it's by the girl or some probably very handsome, strong and authoritative individual who probably owns a thriving farm. A guy I went to high school had been stealing from Walmart in a pretty clever way. He would grab video games, 
MP3 players, beer, etc. and throw them away in a trash can in the garden section. The workers never check the trash contents and he would just wait, sometimes five hours until they emptied the trash in the back dumpster and hop in to get his items. Once he took a cardboard box from a display inside, filled it with video games, a PS3, and extra controllers. He grabbed some tape and pens and drew all over the box and taped it up to make it look used and tossed it. An hour later he had a whole new PS3 and stack of games. Working in a home improvement store when younger. This guy came in, went to the snow blowers, took one and went to the return desk. Said he wanted to return it but had no receipt. They told him you need a receipt so he says okay I'll be back and wheels it off to car through the front door. He did this a few times apparently. Couple places even helped him load it back into his car. This guy isn't a criminal mastermind but here goes. He wanted to rob a jeweler's on our city's main street. So he found out the flat beside the jeweler's was empty and he hid there. For two weeks he triggered the alarm on purpose several times a night, massive headache for the police and the business. We turned up to see nothing there, nothing on cameras. Thought it was just a fluke so the jewelers turned off the alarm system and said they'd wait until the morning to get a new one installed or that one rewired because something wasn't right. As soon as he heard that and the police leaving he tore down the wall, he had already been working on this apparently, and robbed the place taking his sweet time, escaped without anyone noticing anything for hours, until the jewelers came back in the morning. Then he tried to resell something he stole which had a serial number on it and got caught. So not that smart after all. Good effort though. Probably someone who committed a crime I never solved. With that being said I had a guy use a sledgehammer to smash his way through a wall at a Best Buy and steal a bunch of phones and cameras. He was smart enough to wear gloves and a face mask and not touch anything he didn't have to. Alarms didn't go off until he exited out the back door, which the alarm company gets after a minute or two and takes them like three to four minutes to call in to us, giving him a good five minute head start so he was probably a few miles away before we got dispatched to it. He clearly scoped out the area before doing his deed too. Smart dude. Homeless guy in my hometown figured out if he committed some act of petty theft he'd get a night in jail, a warm place to sleep and a hot meal. He'd show up, turn in his stolen goods and that would be that. After a while the police would just tell him to take back whatever he stole the next day. Quite the town character.